You know, Ryan, I forget at the top of almost every episode of this show to let everybody know there's going to be spoilers. There's going to be a lot of spoilers coming. Your you way. have been warned. You have been very warned. Take that into account. There you go. We're all on the same page. Now, having said that, I killed Sparky too. <laughs> 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 oh my god Whoa! i love catherine on i'm just that i catherine on i love you i love you to bits and you just made us all love you that much more this is infinity rewatch i'm not ryan j whitehead and i'm not andrew fantasia <laughs> but we'll figure out who we are Soon enough. And this is episode mm-hmm. seven, seven of WandaVision, breaking yep. the fourth wall. Something Deadpool does a lot, but he didn't show up here. Just mm-hmm. getting that out of the way. He's not here. Yeah. No Deadpool. It's okay, though. No Deadpool. Ryan, how are you feeling? Anyone. How are you feeling about this? Man, we are we are in the home stretch. And it is, I, I loved your last message, which was, I can't believe we have to wait yet another week. I mean... It, this is like, we grew up with this. I mean, kids today, they did it, but we grew up with this, so we should be used to it. But at this scale, with this level, this level of content, know. it's unfair. It is so unfair. I mean, but I get it because at the same time, we don't just want to get it all at once. We want to process and really digest this and, and then talk about it on this show, which is what we're doing. And Oh my God, man, what a way to end this episode. Good Lord. This episode, though, has made me reflect on it all day. And uh, and I will sit back and say that this was a true Marvel-esque episode. It, mm-hmm. it really is. And and I'll, we'll explain why as we go. But I, I really, it, this, sh- this episode made me reflect a lot. But for me, the fact that we're at the point now where it's it's the 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 battleground is set, and the teams are are getting together to do their thing. Um, we got three different factions right now. We got the rebels, we got the sword, and we got Wanda, and what's going on in Wanda's world. And and now it's 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 on. And I'm this is where I'm really excited because there's been a lot of story building, which is fantastic and a lot of fun to explore. But at this point. All it's all a game of chess now. Every move you make is going to affect the board, and it, I I can't wait. It's so good. Yeah, well put. This is all about getting pieces in right places. It's if it wasn't for that final scene, that final reveal, not a whole lot really happens in this to push everything forward. It's really just like get this person here and mm-hmm. make this person react to this, and that that's literally it. Um, there, there's just a lot of, uh, setup. Uh, that's really how this felt a lot of setup and it was shorter than we expected, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's okay. That's all right. I just hope we get, we were lied to, we, we were, were lied, lied to. to because I was told that in an interview with the director that he said the last three episodes were an hour long. To be fair, this was longer, but mm-hmm. it wasn't an hour. Yeah. I, those last two, I just, I'm waiting for the, it's like, okay, you gave me the, what's like a really small hamburger like a regular hamburger from mcdonald's Kid-sized burger yeah you gave me the you gave me the baby burger all right it's... now now you give me the papa burger with the three patties two mm-hmm. of those please and thank you that's that's what's okay. gonna happen next week um so l- let's talk about what is going on with wanda because we kick things off she wakes up she's mm-hmm. dressed weird in bed because everything is hap- like all the times are are glitching and she goes downstairs and eats her cereal and the kids are like, what's going on with mom? What's happening here? Why is what, in your opinion, why is Westview messing up like this? Well, I, I think it's, it, I, I feel like it's, it's obviously connected to Wanda's control at this point, because this point she has stretched her power that much further like she has pushed the boundaries that much further and what from what we know in the comics is is uh dr strange admitted in the comics that she doesn't even know her power like she doesn't like there's she may think she has a control over it in which in part she does uh but that's that's only to her knowledge of what she can do and if if we're basing this on the house of m comic 
this this is where her power just gets out of control to a point where she doesn't even know that she's she's capable of doing this and that makes her descent into madness even greater like this is getting shakespearean in terms of the level of tragedy she's experiencing and at this point um at this point like like i said like she's really pushed her power out there and i don't think she really understands what she's done or what she's doing and and that's starting to affect the world around her the kids uh you know they they ran downstairs and their controller switched from you know atari to gamecube to uno cards to then to the nintendo wii so I think what we're seeing is Wanda's mind just going into this madness and seeing the different influences that um, that have affected her life uh, and just kind of all meshing together. And interesting enough, the beginning of the show definitely had the uh, the Modern Family slash Office kind of spoof to it. So we've definitely reached the end of the sitcoms, as far as I know. I mean, I don't know of any other genre of sitcoms we're going to tackle. But I love that she's starting to narrate. But even her world is not working the way it should that we see a scene later on where like the camera talks back to her. We find out why the camera talks back to her. So she's kind of even losing grip of the narrative that she created. Yeah. I tried to find out who that voice was. Um, and I couldn't get a read on it. Like it almost sounded like Kevin Feige. And I know that sounds silly. Mm. Like I, I couldn't pinpoint the voice. I was trying to look it up. I couldn't find anybody who, had a good you know answer of who the voice was but yeah mm-hmm. after we hit this period there's they've reached the end of the road when it comes to mm-hmm. the history of television sitcoms I, can't, I don't think we can go any further forward and i'm glad because i think it's time to wrap up the story now and we know there's two left two long episodes left right kevin and uh they're going to tie everything uh, up nicely for us uh, i like that the glitch is you know i like that her world is falling apart because it it drives us towards the end but it also it it visually is just nice to see uh i i'm of the mind that i like decor of the olden days um Mm -hmm. and when i see her modern living room and then it turns slowly into a 70s living room i'm like wow seeing it like that so quickly after another just goes to show how ugly modern decor is to me. Like, I think it's so boring. (laughs) And then it goes to the seventies where everything is colorful and warm. And I'm just like, yes, take me there, please. Um, Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe that's just me. Uh, Did you notice she had a a tin of Sanka coffee in her fridge? I did not. She's drinking some Sanka. Have you ever had a, a cup of Sanka, Ryan? I don't, I don't drink coffee actually. So uh, I never have. And I don't think I ever will. <laughs> I've never, I've never had Sanka and I'm curious because it just, it looks so of its time. Like it mm-hmm. looks, you, you yeah. see the jar of it and it's just orange and Brown. And you're like, that came from 1974. There's no other decade where that would exist. Uh, I want to one day I'll try Sanka before I die. Um, <laughs> so her, her whole, her whole world is crumbling apart on her. Um, and the, uh, the aspect ratio also changes, which I think was kind of an interesting thing. They've been playing with the aspect ratio a lot. And when we are in the sitcom world, we've got a full screen. And when we go mm-hmm. out to sword, we get the bars. Because the you, wide screen compared yeah. to full screen. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Was- I thought that was interesting, yeah, because for me, it bothered me at first how different they are nowadays. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, we got the four by three, which is your standard full screen square. And I remember used to argue, used to argue with my cousin because TVs um, at the time, TVs, if you had widescreen, it didn't quite format properly because widescreen was becoming the new norm. Um, And for me, I still loved full screen because I wanted the whole image to be thrown across the screen but now we are so much we are used to so much more of widescreen now to a point where if you do now monitors have adjusted to it so it still looks full screen to us now but the image is wider so you see and my cousin's argument back then was always like widescreen's better because you see more um and that's interesting to me because for me full screen my argument with full screen was you see what you needed to see so I think that kind of argument plays a role in this because in a sitcom, you see what you need to see. You don't need to worry about the little extras going on 
around you. You need to focus on what's happening, what you're looking at, which is the relationship between Vision and Wanda, which is referred to later on um, by Darcy. And yeah, with Sword, there there is a lot going on, right? There's this world that's being expanded into, and and we last left Darcy being handcuffed to uh, one of the SUVs, and now she's in Wanda's world. Yeah, and speaking of Sword, okay, there there's a big uh, there's a big sort of thing we got to put on the table here and be like, what's going on? Because what's his face there, Agent Jackass? He wants to use vision as a weapon that is confirmed now he 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 wasn't content with just letting that dead body be a dead body he was gonna Mm -hmm. resurrect vision himself what's this guy's deal man you know i it's interesting because you have to understand wanda's wandavision's playing a very important role in where this is going and um this is WandaVision is doing a bridge because and it's interesting that they're starting with this because remember Black Widow was supposed to kick off phase four mm-hmm. and WandaVision was supposed to come much later in, in this like and by much later I mean within the year um, but we're talking like I think Black Widow is supposed to come out uh, in May. Yeah, yeah and May then I of think like the, last year. Yeah and then and WandaVision then, and, was supposed to be right before Christmas I think. Yeah, WandaVision was going to be like December. Mm -hmm. Um, So for them to go first is kind of weird. But the interesting thing is about this is that WandaVision bridges the Sokovia events of the whole Civil War, Sokovia Accords. um, And also it's bridging in the new events, which is S.W.O.R.D., which is taking place after Captain Marvel. So it's doing all these big events where it's trying to, you know, get everything together here. And that's a lot of ground to cover. And it's cool to see that we get uh, director Hayward or acting director Hayward uh, saying that he wanted to resurrect Vision. Because if you look at the events of Civil War, Vision did sign the uh, the Sokovian Accords. Um, so he technically is registered as a military weapon. And and Cap was worried about this because Cap was worried about their their freedom, right? As Scarlet Witch's freedom and uh, and also vision, I guess even including vision and stuff. Because what did what did uh, Thaddeus Ross say about Hulk and Thor? He said that if I placed a couple of megaton nukes, you are you sure I'd be paying for it? So. Clearly, the military looks at them as weapons, and that's what Cap was afraid of. So I think that's a really cool commentary and really interesting scene. And yes, he is a jackass. Like, this guy is a really annoying douchebag. But yeah, he's he's resurrecting Vision, and I think that's because the military would want a weapon that can change density, has a conscience, well, you know, is able to take orders, I guess, in that, that way. That way. Um, but he's a powerful weapon to have that that respected the Sokovian Accords. So because Vision signed the Accords, he's technically property of the U.S. government? In, in a matter of speaking, yeah. This is, this is actually kind of like a, 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 a relevation. Relevation? Re, re, revelation? This, yeah, that's the one. It's one of those moments. Um, it is one of those moments because, because I just realized that, 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 uh, Cap warned everybody. He's like, "This is run by people with agendas, and and you know, what if they send us somewhere we don't want to go? Right? What if there's somewhere we want to go and they don't send us?" He was worried that this was going to happen, and in Wandavision, it's happening. And and to the fact where they were trying to bring back Vision, and they, I've I've truly believed that he was going to be a weapon. And from a storytelling standpoint, now it makes this final battle, whoever's going to be involved, all the more interesting because now it's keeping, you know, before you could have technically said, you know, just tell Hayward to shut up and go away and Mm. Wanda can live in her happy bubble. But now she can't live in her bubble because it's clearly not happy uh, because there's some shady supernatural stuff going on. And if she comes out of the bubble... Hayward's going to take Vision and use him as a weapon because it before right. it was just like if we get her out, Vision goes back in the morgue, mm-hmm. done. But now that's not the case. She's not safe in there and she's not safe out here. So it creates this really cool tension now. And now I'm just like, oh God, what are they going to do? They've got enemies on both sides. Uh, so I really liked that this like it, before it's just like okay, Hayward's a jerk, fine. 
but that didn't really affect anything. Now it's like, okay, he's not only a jerk, but he's going to do stuff that will, what he's up to is going to be horrible if he mm-hmm. gets what he wants. So yeah, you stop yeah. him and stop the forces of darkness going on underneath Westview. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's interesting because like the only scene we really see of him is like him just getting ready for essentially war. Like he seems mm-hmm. very, very headstrong in that particular category. And the other fascinating thing I wanted to bring up is Vision in the comics um, originally was introduced as as Ultron's weapon is his vision for humanity if you will and he was supposed to be essentially a you know a sword to to ultron's will um and now the interesting thing is his vision wasn't a popular character so even after the avengers like hey like um uh save vision if you will and like hey you're 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 a real boy now they actually uh they actually put him into like a coma a robotic coma because he just yeah, I don't know. He just couldn't handle being a human or something. There's the details are kind of fuzzy on that, but um, but essentially what happens is he ends up he ends up just being a soulless robot, and and they they can't really turn him back on. And then eventually, what they do is um, Simon Williams comes along as Wonder Man, and something happens to him, and Wanda falls in love with Wonder Man, so they put him in to Wonder Man, or sorry, they put him into Vision, so Vision becomes a different person. So he has a very complex, weird story. And my guess is if if S.W.O.R.D. was tackling rebuilding Vision, maybe they were looking into putting a soldier in Vision. Because if he could take on a consciousness like Jarvis, which they referenced, then why not put a soldier in, in him? Maybe, yeah. Man. But like, if he's... Again, I don't know how the computer side of Vision works, uh, but if uh, I don't know how the computer side of our computers work, for God's sake. But <laughs> if, if it's just a matter of plugging something into him and being like, okay, control, alt, delete, you do what I say now, that's a really easy way to get your hands on a really, really powerful weapon. Uh, mm-hmm. in, in the comics, um, did Vision speak with the, uh, the beautiful, sultry British tones of uh, Paul Bettany as well? Or, or, or <laughs> he like, was he, was, he was written with like that that flair. Or was he written like I am a robot? Uh, Marvel when they always do like a character talking. Like if you if you look at how Thor speaks in the comics, they actually do kind of a uh, what I would call a Norse looking font. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but at the time, I think it was it wasn't the way his quote box looked. It was the way he spoke. And it, yes, he spoke with a lot of very articulated words. It was like watching G.I. Joe the cartoon. You never really, as a kid, you didn't really understand what they were saying because they used a lot of really complex things. But as you grow up, you realize that those are really sophisticated words they used in children's show. Um, so Vision was the same way. He, he, he would say things like, you know, like relevation and all this stuff or the word I can't seem to pronounce today. I don't know. But yeah, so, so Vision, yes, he kind of seemed like he had this kind of robotic butler thing. Which is perfect because he came from Jarvis. So in a way, it's yeah. like they, all those haters who were like, well, that's not where Jarvis comes yeah. from. You know, now it's like, well, you can make the argument that it kind of is uh, from mm-hmm. a certain point of view, Luke. Um, <laughs> now, that is a certain point of view. Uh, I love that man's voice too. I, oh, R- R.I.P. Alec Guinness. Um, yeah. Sir, Sir Alec Guinness. Sir Alec, my mistake. Yeah, he's a knight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to mm-hmm. be a knight. When when we get to this point where our team of heroes, we need a name for them. Let's call them the Rambo three. Uh, when, when the Rambo three gets to that point where they meet up with that lady who gives them the truck. First uh, of all, I, gunner. I, I love the design on this truck. I think that's just like, it looks like a, like a star Wars vehicle. Like it just looks otherworldly and cool. Um, mm. When, when that truck pulled out, I was like, I want that. That's dope. Um, mm-hmm you you message me at that point and you're like oh we're not getting the 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 what we thought we were getting anymore we're not getting our astrophysicist but yeah i i don't i didn't see that scene at all as the show saying this is the answer to that astrophysicist question i just saw this as a random sword lady who's like yeah we know hayward's an asshole here you go take this truck mm-hmm. Did I, am i reading it wrong I don't know. I I don't think you're reading it wrong. I just don't it, like we were talking about it slightly before the show, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, 
And just before we started this Infinity Rewatch, you know, our, on the Rebel Scum Podcast Network, which you should always hit that like, you know, listen to it. Don't forget to subscribe because they got content coming out left, right, and center. Um, but uh, we were talking about it just beforehand, and I will say that you were both not right, but we're both not wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, I think you have the, the right optimistic view that, like, they could use for this wonderful film term here. I'm going to throw a little film term action at you uh, with the diegetic and all that stuff. Intertextuality. They can do some intertextuality later on and say that, oh, you know, um, they could run into Hank McCoy and be like, okay, th- by the way, this is the guy that helped, helped us build the, the vehicle. So they could they could easily reference that, um, or even within the show in the next episode, they'd be like, "Okay, well that didn't work. What do you got for us, Hank?" And then drop the Hank bomb th- then and there, or read um, right then and there. Now that being said, it is still up in the air. I I personally think that maybe it's just a small detail to make us start thinking about these things, which Kevin Feige has been known to do. He'll plant a seed, and that seed will be so small and insignificant until much later on and then it's something big and and or it's just something to be like hey cool um hey cool this is happening but you know nothing's gonna happen yet best example i can give you guys is in iron man 2 the deleted scene he talks about project exodius and and uh, goliath and all this stuff so clearly the seeds were planted to tell us that project goliath for example is is clearly ant-man doing giant man um but uh we didn't see that till ant-man which was much much later on and that was a deleted scene so it didn't even make it into it um and there are a lot of kind of references within the mcu where they could have planted a ton of seeds and we just might not see them at any point yeah and i think that there are lots of small seeds all throughout this whole franchise but i don't think Mm -hmm. this is one of them i don't think this is a small seed the way they've been stack in this house of cards is like i'm gonna call my astrophysicist friend whose name i'm conveniently not going to say out loud but here's a close-up of my phone as i dial his number and then i'll bring him up again two episodes from now and then when Mm. people interview the actress and she's like oh wait till you see who the astrophysicist is like i don't i i think this i think we've gone beyond the realm of the small scene now i think that this is something that's going to hit for either next week's hour long episode or the yeah. hour long finale to follow a week after. Uh, and uh, it's going to be Kelsey Grammer as Hank McCoy walking out with his nice suit and being yeah. like, you wasted me in X-Men three. So here's my chance to actually be the beast. Thank you very well, much. Well, I mean, I, again, I'm hoping our Hank theory pays off. I really do because so far there's been some theories we've had that actually, and one of them did, which proved true. Uh, in this very episode, uh, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about that. Um, but yes, we're going to focus on this scene right now with the, the 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 vehicle that was supposed to break through this wall here, break through the fourth wall, if you will. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so one thing I did notice is this scene is, first of all, the, one of the coolest scenes. Um, and the vehicle, the she wears the astronaut outfit, which I thought was interesting. So spec. So Spectrum, uh, she puts on uh, the whole astronaut suit, or Captain Rambo, if we want to get technical. Um, She puts on the astronaut suit and drives the truck in. The truck doesn't work. I had a feeling it wasn't going to work. Classic Marvel Marvel move here. They think they have a solution. Doesn't pay off. Um, And she gets out. And then she decides to just spearhead it and just run through it. And there's there's a theory I have to this, which I'm going to run with for a little bit um so she runs through it and just breaks through that 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 wall which is a really cool scene um i i love this scene i and i love this because this is where i feel like the show why i love these tv shows more and because you can now do origin stories without having to do them in movies and now i see why kevin feige said origin stories don't really need to happen in movies anymore because they're kind of redundant they're kind of done they're dry you can't really keep them fresh in a way um and here you have a character like captain rambeau who played a smaller role at the beginning of the show and slowly perpetuates to become a much more important if not the most important character in the show and boom you give her powers right through that sequence which i thought was super cool 
Um, also, I have to point out that her transformation sequence kind of reminded me of the first Fantastic Four movie when they went through um, when they went through the space radiation thing, uh, which I thought was really interesting. Quantum Ooh. radiation, uh, because you see um, you see Reed Richards kind of stretch out. Eh? Uh, and take a hit of the wave and he kind of gets blown back by it and it kind of uh kind of breaks it kind of breaks the, or distorts him if you will and it kind of does the same with captain rambo which i thought was really cool so we kind of this was a really interesting sequence and the other seed i noticed um was that if you look at her sword suit it kind of has the same colors a slightly off colors but same similar colors to fantastic four it has the blue shoulders and then it has a kind of lighter blue tone underneath uh with the the sword logo right in the middle yeah i was actually when she's confronting wanda i was looking at it and in my head i was like she looks like she's wearing a star trek uniform like she's working for Starfleet yeah. right now uh, and I, I always, I thought it was weird when she put on the astronaut suit to begin with. Cause I was like, did nobody tell her about Mr. Beekeeper? Like that, yeah. that's, what's that going to do? Um, yeah. but then it seemed to, to change or, or at least like she shed like the outer part of her or whatever. And now she has this sword kind of jumpsuit underneath, but you're right. It's very fantastic for It's very sci-fi looking. I don't mm. know what, um, Prism's powers are like. I imagine she shoots rainbows out of her eyes and they kill Spectrum. people. Spectrum. Spectrum. Why did I think Prism? The same thing. Yeah, I don't know. Spectrum. <laughs> uh, I, but that could still work. The color Spectrum. I imagine she shoots rainbows out of her eyes and kills people. I hope I'm right because that sounds wicked. Um, but she's standing up to Wanda, which is the first toe time to toe. I've seen that happen. Toe to toe. Can she fly? She can. She can fly. All right. There's going to be so many people flying in this finale. It's going to be nuts. So I couldn't agree more. And I will say that the interesting thing is um, I love how Marvel has been designing their superpowers, I will say. And I, I say this carefully because you look at Quicksilver, for example. Uh, at the time when Age of Ultron came out, uh, X-Men uh, Days of Future Past was coming out as well. And we had the whole Quicksilver fiasco. Mm -hmm. Um but they did two very different takes on it. And I have to say, I do love Marvel's approach because they did the, 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 the lightning streaks and you kind of see just quick flashes of them. Um, and so with Spectrum, I loved how they did her eyes kind of echoing, doing this kind of echoing uh, thing. And when you look through her perspective, you actually see these really cool waves coming off um, the electrical wires and everything. So that's that's part of her power. She is able to see different uh, spectrums of everything. Uh, and on top of that, she can also channel and shoot out different spectrums of energy. So yeah, she has some laser blasting ability there. Ooh, there's, there's a fantasy series called the Lightbringer series where mm -hmm. people all have that power like you're you're born with like you can you can control the the red light of the spectrum or you can control yellow or some people are can control like two or three or then it gets like more and more rare and then like one person in the world could control them all and he's called the prism mm -hmm. um and it sounds like that's what they're going for with this with this character with the power so that sounds kind of neat and colorful yeah. which is what marvel's all about yeah, absolutely. And it looks like she's starting to learn her powers um, as we're going here. And I think that's an unrated, underrated portion of a superhero story. They Sometimes they focus in on it and it's great, but other times I don't think they elaborate enough on it. Because, for example, I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in, um, uh, let's just, I'm going to throw in a Superman reference in a Marvel show. I'm going to do it. I'm going to break my own rule here, but Bring it needs it. to be done. Bring it needs to be done. If you were someone like Superman, okay, you don't know the limit of your powers. So the first time someone shoots at you, you're not going to just stand there and take it. You're going to try to get out of the way. So naturally, it's kind of like riding a bike, right? Like you don't know how to ride the bike. All you know is that you need to balance and you need to move forward. And you know that, and then every time you start do it going on a bicycle growing up you start with the tricycle right you got to learn how to balance with the wheels and you learn you got to move forward 
then you learn the training wheels come off. But now you know that once you start pedaling that you start to wiggle, right? And if you stop, you fall over and that's going to happen. And then once you get it, you start to get the motions of, you know, the bicycle and then everything's balanced. So the Superman is the same deal. Like I, I think what I liked about the cartoon that when Bruce Tim did it, um, you know, you kind of see him discovering things as he's doing it. And you kind of see the, the choices he makes to do it. For example, there's a family caught in a truck that's about to explode and there's fire all around them. And he just, and he knows he just needs to help them. So he just immediately does it without thinking about the fire. And then he realizes after that he went through it and then thus the discovery of what he's able to do. So with Captain Rambo, I love that we're seeing that already. She, she just comes through and sees the world with new eyes and is able to see the different spectrum of everything. And then she just runs, right? So clearly she doesn't know she can fly yet. She just decides to book it. Then when she faces Wanda, she does that cool superhero landing kind of moment. And it looks like she's starting to understand there's different levels and tiers of her power. I like that, man. I love, I will always welcome a Superman reference. I will always <laughs> welcome a DC reference, period. They can they can live together peacefully in our of universe. Course. Of what, course. What was the name of that universe in DC versus Marvel where they all fused? That's where I want to live. What was it called? Oh, yeah. The <laughs> Impact, Impact Universe or something? I don't know. But that's the one. We're, we're going to live there from now on. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> but speaking of, of wacky universes, it's time to take a commercial break and take our medicine. It's time to take our Nexus. Uh, right? I'm just going to pop a Nexus right there. Which we called. Which we called. We called this one. We called this one. You can go back. You can go back and listen to the podcast. I'm 100% sure that we talked about it was going to be about the mind. And so it is. It's about the mind. And what is it, what is it in the form of? medicine medicine people oh kill that reference beautiful beautiful the stones the infinity stones are what they're selling us mm. uh, and i uh i loved that commercial and what was interesting was afterwards it, it's very quick but it i think it's when uh agnes walks into the house wanda is taking one of these pills she's popping a nexus uh, she's actually using an item from the commercial, and I don't think that's happened before, right? That's she, true. Did she use the paper yeah. towels I, for a sec? Because when I watched it, I was like, oh, maybe she used the paper towels, but I don't think she did. That's true. I didn't realize that. Yeah. This is the first time she talks about it. So if that's the case, this is our first time of the commercial product being used by Wanda or somebody in the world then mm. it's really all starting to bleed together. And it makes sense because her powers are just going all over the place now. We are looking at the end of this neighborhood as we know it. We are. And I will also say while we're, while we're talking about it, so Wanda decides to take a, a mom day to herself. Mm. Um, and uh, fun fact, I, I'm pretty sure my mom's had one of those days where she's like, mom's just resting her eyes, guys. Like, just you know just leave me alone. eat cereal really sloppily too uh, yeah <laughs> no my mom is proper all the time my friend <laughs> um so so uh so the kids you picked up something interesting that that uh we I, man i can't even remember the, which which kids which i'm gonna say billy billy uh has a dr strange-esque outfit yeah, last week he was rocking uh, his Halloween outfit. Was very Doctor Strange esque. I didn't think anything of it uh, because I assumed it was his Wiccan costume. Because you were saying, yeah, yes. those are their costumes. I'm like, okay, cool. They're dressed as Speed and Wiccan. And then my buddy Chris sends me this image with Doctor Strange next to Billy, and I'm like, damn, they look very similar. So mm -hmm. I, maybe that's just a fun thing that Stan Lee did in the comics where, or like something where it's just like, he happened to have the exact same color scheme as Dr. Strange. Cause like we've mm. talked about before, ink was kind of at a premium. So they're like red and blue for the good guys, green and purple for the bad guys done. <laughs> so maybe that's just the case of that. But I just thought it was interesting that the magic kid was dressed as the sorcerer Supreme, who by the way is supposed to be coming to the show. Well, funny you say that. Speaking of coming to the show, um, everyone's still talking about it. Paul Bettany says, uh, Paul Bettany has said that 
that we still haven't seen this person that he's worked with this that he got a chance to work with that he was really excited about so who whatever this big payoff is it hasn't happened yet because he can, fans have confirmed that's not quicksilver quicksilver was not the cameo appearance that that vision was referring to so Paul he was haven't... like i never wanted to work with quicksilver I... <laughs> I didn't want to work with evan peters i don't care about him <laughs> um but uh so they're still hinting at some big big cameo appearance that we haven't seen yet um mm. which means in my opinion, I'm pretty sure we know where it's going. I think I I think it's after the end of this episode, I'm pretty sure we know where it's going and it's it's definitely going that direction. Um, but let's go back to the commercial for a second because yeah. that let's let's keep in mind as we move forward the word nexus, because I'm gonna talk about that. So Ooh, okay. Um so the Darcy scene is pretty interesting because Darcy actually catches up vision on what's been going on with Vision's life. Um, and it's kind of interesting that Vision's still playing along with the world. He's still talking to the camera, and he kind of realizes that as well. He's kind of struggling with Wanda preventing him from really getting any further with Darcy. Uh, but Darcy does talk about the relationship, and that it's a very powerful relationship. And she does the big drop that it's like, you know, she does the big drop that's like, hey, like you asked Wanda to kill, you know, kill you and to save the universe. And then she mentions that they do truly love each other, which is really nice as well. Then as we move forward in the story, let's go to the let's go to the payoff. Let's go to the big the big stuff. So so first of all, we get a look at Agnes's house. We finally get to see it. Now, what I find is interesting about this is the house is extremely dark. Like mm-hmm. it is a very low lit place. Um, and and well, Wanda's back at home and the house is kind of freaking out. Uh, we see a store. We see the stork that was painted. Uh, the, the house goes through different transitions, as you talked about. Uh, but the kids now have gone back to the house. Now, if you know your House of M knowledge, comic book knowledge, you know the kids are soul fragments of Mephisto. And so Agnes seems pretty happy that she has the kids now at the house, and that they're they seem that they're at that 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 they're at home. And uh, Billy says, I'm pretty sure it's Billy at this point. I'm just going to say Wiccan. Wiccan <laughs> says, um, Wiccan says that he doesn't hear the voices anymore. So Ooh. something's going on here with these kids. And the kids are going to, I think the kids are going to play that role that they're supposed to. I think they are the, the soul fragments of Mephisto. Because Wanda, after having her toe-to-toe th- superhero throwdown, um little it was only just a, just just a taste just a small sample of maybe what we'll get later yeah it was a little bit of a standoff yeah mm-hmm. it's a little bit of a standoff um agnes takes her back to her place and she heads down to the basement <laughs> which is where the kids are so uh this basement is interesting so i looked at it very carefully and it may be a doorway to the actual nexus. And, and what is the actual nexus, sir? The, the nexus is the center hub for all parallel universes within Marvel. And uh, and also, here's a fun little how do you do. Uh, a guardian of the nexus is Man-Thing. Oh! <gasps> Giant sized man thing? Giant sized man thing. And man the most been suggestive referenced. comic name ever. <laughs> man thing has been referenced in, in, in MCU before. In fact, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., in the second season, um, they have a scene with Maria Hill. And she goes, oh, man, working for Stark, they're, they're always inter- interrogating me about all sorts of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, you know, like the this and that and what is a man thing. And so they actually do drop man thing in there. So I thought that was really interesting. But also, um, also we learn in, in probably the coolest way. And again, great villain origin story. It's so beautifully done. We learn that Agnes is... Agatha Harkness. The witch herself. Be so happy. So happy to hear that this finally... And like, I had no knowledge of Agatha Harkness before you and your brother told me about her because mm-hmm. of this show. 
Like that's yeah. it. my, it's not like I grew up with this character or something. And I'm like, you know, it's not like a kingpin moment for me, but just hearing her say Agatha Harkness made it real because, and correct me if I'm wrong here, from what you guys have told me, if you get her, you're getting Mephisto, right? You have to. You, that's the whole reason she exists. Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> right? That's the whole reason she exists is, is in the House of M story, she ends up warping Wanda's mind and, and kind of hypnotizes her, if you will. Um, and and she and then we learn through that comic that she is a servant of Mephisto. And I can't remember the reason why she does it. And I think it's I think it's to Mephisto just loves making deals with people and gaining power through that. And I think that the kids play a role in giving him that little extra oomph in his power. I could be horribly wrong. Comic book fans, you can correct me. Please leave a comment. Let us know. Um, but yeah, it's I mean, all signs, dude. Like every single sign is pointing Mephisto. Like Tarmac Marshall has got the cones <laughs> just bringing in that plane plane's coming in it's going this way we're going this way that's what we're doing we're going we're flying mephisto airlines yep wonderful you're allowed to smoke on those planes in you fact are allowed, you are yep. forced to smoke on those planes <laughs> the pilot has I, now turned on the smoke sign if you do not smoke you will be ejected exactly and and the other interesting thing is agatha harkness is actually usually a fantastic four villain so Ah, they hog all the good villains. Give them, <laughs> give them to WandaVision. That, that and Spider-Man. That is, yeah, Spider-Man hogs a lot of the good ones. Uh, I was trying to get a look at what Agatha has in her basement because she's got a mm. a curio of skulls and other uh, atrocities there, but I couldn't really get a good glimpse because it goes back pretty quick. But I saw skulls. I saw like some jars of liquid. I mm-hmm. think it's just, it's a full-on horror smorgasbord. And this has been... As I've said, like over the past few weeks, this has been the Marvel horror. Like, I love how scary this has been. And now we're going down a deeper rabbit hole. And I, even though this reveal was done in a hilarious way, probably one of the funniest things they've done in this whole series so far, mm. I'm looking forward to her and Mephisto being done in a way that legitimately makes my skin crawl. Uh, honestly, I, I think you're going to get that because it was a dark and scary area down there. Let me tell you, it is really dark. Um, and I don't mean that like in the lighting sense, I mean that in the legit, like creepy sense, like it's, it's actually, it's kind of got the, what, uh, what I noticed other sources were saying is kind of like a Florida Everglades kind of swampy layer feel and i couldn't agree more and that's which is where man thing hangs out right which is where man thing hangs out kind of getting that vibe when she stepped into that central room Mm -hmm. we got the aspect ratio bars again yes we did so it's the, the the show is telling us when we leave her bubble and venture out into the unknown uh in this case the unknown being literally unknown because we don't know what's down there maybe it's ghost rider maybe he's hanging out down there Uh, i mean the spirit of vengeance could could come out but i don't know i don't know if we're gonna see the spirit of vengeance yet no not not yet that's just wishful nicholas cage fueled thinking on my part but uh (laughs) but what i will say what i will say is is that we don't know what they're gonna do with this parallel dimension thing i'm pretty sure I, my prediction is in a clutch move, there's going to be an epic battle and then the battle is going to start throwing down in this Nexus layer-ish area with with uh, with Captain Rambo dealing the punches and in a clutch move, um, Doctor Strange is going to come out and then and then win win the battle. He's going to be the he's going to be the he's going to be the Luke Skywalker of the Mandalorian. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be the Luke Skywalker of Mando. And, uh, and I, st- but I think that the character payoff is not that I think we're, we're still going to see another cameo of whoever, I think it's going to be Mephisto at this point. It's gotta be. And the interesting thing is, I mean, Mephisto could do a lot of creative things here. And I think we do see technically Mephisto in this, in my opinion, because we do get that end credit scene with Quicksilver 
coming back in. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that Agatha makes him look like Quicksilver, um, but uh, I think that's Mephisto underneath that. That's interesting that because I this morning when I saw the images of him from last week when they did the recap, I was like, I know they're trying to do the Quicksilver hair, but God, that looks a lot like the Mephisto hair too. So mm-hmm. I like where your head's at, brother. I think that's really cool. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see your Doctor Strange Hail Mary pass, you know, eleventh hour rescue thing, and I'm gonna raise yep. you. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to raise you in a way that's, it could be crazy, man, but I think, I think this works. Bear with me here. We have, we have the Infinity Saga where there were six stones all over the place and eventually we got them all in one place. And bad stuff happened because of that, right? Mm-hmm. Now we're in a different saga. We don't know what that saga is yet. We know probably Christine Everhart's involved somehow, but we don't know the full details of like, what is the thread that ties this whole saga together? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out on a very treacherous limb and say this. So, and this is just based off what you just told me. I didn't have this okay. idea until right now, until you said about the Nexus. So, oh my God, is this another it. moment? Is this, <laughs> is this another moment? So the Nexus is this, this literal Nexus between worlds, right? So mm-hmm. I'm going to say that somebody in, involved in the finale of WandaVision, whether it's Wanda, Vision, Agatha, Mephisto, Doctor Strange, whoever, some main player, maybe Darcy, I don't know, Monica, some main player from this finale of WandaVision is going to do something in the Nexus that involves traveling. And we're going to see that character appear in every other Marvel movie and Disney Plus show for the foreseeable future in like a small cameo where they pop through a Nexus and do something to alter something and then pop back out. Ooh. To us watching WandaVision, it's going to be instant. We're going to see like Monica go through a portal and come back out and she's like all frazzled and they're like, what happened? You were gone for a second. But she's going to go visit every other movie that's taking place and every other show simultaneously and do something, maybe warn them or whatever, because bad stuff is happening. I'll take it. I'll take the theory. It's believable. I mean, I, one thing I will say that I like about your theory is that it, you're right. I think it has to build because it's all about interconnectivity at this point. Interconnectivity, that's what Kevin Feige wants. Uh, Kevin, we love you, by the way. Keep Just keep going, buddy. Keep going. You're, do, you're doing great. Doing great things. Um, I, what I like about your theory is that it could set up a villain, another villain that could play, or another character that could play throughout. Um, I feel feel like you're hinting at Doc Doom. I feel like it. Because he would be, he is someone powerful enough to do that. And he has mm-hmm. done that. So it could. It could very well be that play. <sighs> so you're on to something. You're on to something. Doom, Doom is is very doable. I like when I hear it being said out loud, it sounds totally like something that they would save for Kang the Conqueror because yes. he's a time traveler. So yeah, that's true. if if they save that aspect for Kang, cool. Awesome. Um mm-hmm. but just because you described what the nexus was, I was like, okay, somebody is using this and what they do in it is not going to be seen in this show. It's going to be seen somewhere else. Um, you know what then? Actually then yes, your theory does work because it could be Kang the Conqueror and then we see Kang and Ant-Man and Quantum's all about time, right? Quantum's all about what we see may take place in five minutes, but it's only, you know, or sorry, what may take place over a series of, of long events could only take place in like a few seconds if it was in the quantum realm, right? So right. you're right. I think that's a building, it could be a building block that way. So we could see Kang, which they did announce that they have Kang cast. Yeah, he's which, ready to why go. Would, why, why would they do that if, or well, I mean, it's one thing to just announce it, but it's another thing to announce it this far early enough to be like, oh, okay, you know? I don't know. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like it. So I think we'll 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 leave it we'll leave it at those theories. 
there's mm-hmm. still a lot to there's still a lot of ground to cover we need to know where now we know what's happened we need to know where this is going and to get to to get to what happened uh in one episode has been pretty incredible i think we've been waiting for this with the, especially with all the with the first three episodes of the the weird tv nonsense we finally finally have a good grip on on what's going on now we need to know where is this going and what's going to happen those are the two big questions that need to need to play out through the next hour long two episodes hopefully that's right both (laughs) of them will be an hour long and the the agnes reveal or the agatha reveal i should say is perfect because when i look back i remember how she was never they never told us her name was agnes Mm -hmm. until the episode aired until the pilot aired when she walks in she's like i'm agnes your new neighbor before that she was just credited as nosy neighbor and Mm -hmm. i think that's because as soon as she opens her mouth and says agnes somebody in the know like you and like nick whitehead you guys are like you're on that you're like agatha harkness so they didn't give us the chance to have that brewing over the past you know six months it's just been since the show started which i think is the perfect place to plant that seed because somebody who is unaware of Agatha Harkness can be like, yeah, maybe it's her. And now that we have that confirmation, which I love that reveal, it was Agatha all along. <laughs> that is so sweet. And it's, it's really, it's just another great example of how Marvel is so good at giving us just what we want. Mm-hmm, just, mm-hmm. We know you guys want this. Here it is. And they've been getting better at that with Star Wars, too. I mean, Mandalorian Season 2, uh, which we also spoiled this episode. So don't listen to this if, you've seen Mandal- if you haven't seen Mandalorian yet. But they're, they're getting there, too, with being like, we know you want this, so here it is. Mm-hmm. Um, they know we've wanted Agnes to be Agatha, and she is beautiful. She was faking it last week in the truck when Vision found her. It's all coming together. And now she's a witch. And she's going to do witchy. And they spell it out for you. I mean, they show you that she's a witch. She wears the Halloween costume. Um, I love in the It Was Agatha All Along sequence, we actually do get to see a small hint of her, her original comic book outfit, which is the purple dress, um, and when she first comes into the scene uh, as the part of the whole reveal. So that's really cool as well. Um, but yeah, you're right. So here we are. We, we made it. Uh, we finally got all, or I'd say most of the answers, but there's still two big questions and two big answers we need to those questions to, uh, to, to really get the whole picture. Yeah. And those answers mm. are going to be Beast and Mephisto. Ooh, lock it Ooh. in. Blue versus red. It's Man. both happening. Uh, and all right. FYI, I would totally watch a show called Agatha all along. Just, just saying. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I loved it. I, I, again, it's a, a great way to introduce a villain. So Fantasia, I got a, I got a little end credit thing that I want to do with you. A little, a little end podcast moment here. Um, now, in, in past segments, you've asked me, never tell me the odds. And mm-hmm. I love those. I love those kind of things. So I have a moment for you here. I want you to tell me what was the Marvel moment for you? In this episode, what was the big Marvel moment? In this episode? In this episode. Um, without a doubt, it was walking into that skeleton basement of horrors and having her be like, Agatha all along. Uh, mm. That just... And then having her laugh that she killed a dog. <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> Why is Catherine Hahn not more popular? <laughs> I, so I don't funny. know. Ah, yeah. oh, that definitely is that for me. What about you? For me, the Marvel moment was Spectrum because it was such a Marvel story. Because if you look at the comics, you have characters that you'll pay no mind to in in pages. Like you'll be like, oh, that's weird. This person's on the plane with this other person. Like, why why does that why is that important? Then you learn later on that they're a hero. Like it, and this is this is a beautiful way to introduce new characters in in a format that that you don't have to tell a whole movie origin story and tell all this all this stuff in a two-hour package. No, you could make this character uh, a small character uh, that that has great relations with other characters, and then make them an important character as you go. You can't you can't top that. That's 
that's that's Marvel. That's the Marvel method. I love it. That is a merry Marvel moment. I adore mm-hmm. it. Um, mm-hmm. So as we as we close off today, Ryan, I'm going to tell you a joke that I heard. You ready? Okay. It's a good yes. joke. What's the difference between Wanda Maximoff and Daredevil? I don't know. What? When Daredevil lost his vision, he didn't hold a whole town hostage. Hey! Ah! <laughs> I can't take credit for that. I heard it somewhere. But <laughs> You're welcome. That's good. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. Well done, sir. Well done. Uh, I- well, we all know now it was, in fact, Agatha all along. And... I couldn't be happier. Uh, next week, Mephisto, maybe. Beast, maybe. Doctor Strange, perhaps. Hour long, better be. Uh, <laughs> but uh, until then, you know where to find us. We'll be back again to talk about that hour long episode when it happens here on Infinity Rewatch. I am not Ryan J. Whitehead. And I'm not Andrew Fantasia. And we did not kill Sparky too. Have a marvelous day. Thank you.